you know Anil Ambani, he floated the Reliance Power. How many? 1.1 lakh crores. He got 100 times more than what he wanted. No bank would have given him so much money. What he did? He floated stock. What is stock? It is Islamic system, profit and loss sharing. Correct? In interest, it is haram because there are many negative factors. In Islam, we believe in profit and loss sharing. You know, you buy shares. You buy shares of a company. If you make profit, you get profit. If you make loss, you make a loss. It's not fixed. 8%, 9%. And the other person makes a lot of money. So what they do, they float shares. So if you buy stock of a halal company, as long as it's not alcohol company, it's not bank, it's not haram activity, it is Islamic. So we in Islam believe in profit and loss sharing. Anil Ambani, he floated, he got 100 times more than what he wanted. Correct? 1.1 lakh crores. In one hour itself, he got more than 10 times than what he wanted. Why? People thought, okay, if I invest with Anil Ambani, I'll not get that fixed 8%, 9%, 10%. 10%. I'll make 20%, 30%, 50%. You know, and the mutual funds, if you're a banker, GM Basics, number one, 116% in one year. So what in Islam we believe? In profit and loss sharing. That there is in riba, fixed interest, fixed amount on money earned or money lent is haram. For more details, refer to my video cassette, interest-free economy promulgated by the Quran. That's the reason if you change your bank from a conventional bank to Islamic bank, inshallah you'll have Muslim customers. Inshallah. And today, the Indian government, the RBI, the finance minister, hasn't given permission for a true Islamic bank. But there are people approaching him. I myself spoke to Chidambaram when he came to Saudi Arabia. And there are high possibilities, Manmohan Singh, our Prime Minister. Initially, he was the Finance Minister. He understands finance better. There are high possibilities, inshallah, inshallah. He is studying the system. Along with the Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh, and the Finance Minister, Mr. Chidambaram, there are high possibilities very soon that we will have an Islamic system. And you, surely, see to, to join an Islamic bank. That is the reason today, Citibank, has Islamic window. HSBC has Islamic window. Most of the international banks have Islamic window. Why? Because there they find they'll make more profit and they'll give more profit to their clients. It is Islamic. So if we follow the Sharia, the Quran and Sahih Hadith, you also earn and you let others also earn. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you very much. Yes, brother. My name is uh, Krishna Rao. I am working as a general manager abroad. Luckily today, one of my, fortunately, I have come here with one of my friends who has brought me here today. In fact, Dr. Zakir, I have seen him on TV. And always I had, uh, I mean, this is a great opportunity that has, God has given me to see him personally and ask a question which always I had a doubt in my life, uh, that why God didn't create one religion or he didn't make one religion for everybody so that peace would have been prevailed on this earth. He knew it or he never knew about it that these are the problems which are going to be faced. Brother that's a very good question, very important question. Why did not God create only one religion? Why did he create all the different religions so there would be no confusion, no fighting? And I agree with him, it's a very good question. And if you read the Quran, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, Inna dina in the al Islam. The only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is Islam. Islam means submitting your will to Almighty God. So if you read all the religions, Almighty God only sent messengers to preach one religion. All the messengers that came, right from Adam, peace be upon him, right down, Noah, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all the prophets, and our beloved prophet said, they were 124,000 messengers sent on the face of the earth. And it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 24, there is not a nation or a tribe whom we have not sent a warning or a guide. Allah says in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 7, 
and to every people have we sent of honor. Now all the messengers that came, brother, they taught nothing but submitting the will to Almighty God. And the basic message that all these messengers taught oneness of God. He did not beget. He has got no mother. He has got no father. He is only one. There is nothing like him. But due to passage of time, all what the messengers preached, it got corrupted. And if you heard my talk, I mentioned that most of the scriptures that came before the Quran, they got changed. And Allah says in the Quran, in several places, if he wanted, he could have made everyone submit his will to God. Everyone Muslim. See, Muslim brother, don't take it as a religion. The real meaning of Islam is, it's a deen, it's a way of life. Submitting your will to God. And Muslim doesn't mean a person who has the name Zakir, Abdullah, Sultan. Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. If you submit your will to God in Arabic, I will call you as Muslim. So don't go on the labels given. Sultan, Zakir, Abdullah. Muslim in Arabic means a person who submits his will to God. Anyone who submits his will to God, he is called as a Muslim. So all the messengers that came, they taught that we have to submit our will to God. All of them taught monotheism. All taught Tawheed. But by the passage of time, all these scriptures kept on changing. And that is the reason Almighty God, He sent the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And the last and final revelation, glorious Quran. Now all the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, all the revelations that came before the Quran, they were only meant for those people and for that time. By name, four are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil and the Quran. Torah is the Wahi, the revelation which was given to Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur is the Wahi, the revelation given to David, peace be upon him. Injil is the Wahi, the revelation given to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But Quran also says in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 38, it says, the Kulli Ajlin Kitab. In every age have we sent a revelation. There were several revelations sent down. But all the revelation that came before the Quran, and all the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, they were sent only for those people and for that time. That is the reason Almighty God did not think it fit to preserve it. But since Quran is the last and final revelation, not only sent for the Muslims or the Arabs, it is sent for the whole of humanity. And Prophet Muhammad, he is not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, he has been sent for the whole of humanity. That is the reason he has been prophesied in all the major world religious scriptures. And this book, the Quran, Allah says in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. So what we realize that Almighty God sent messengers to preach only one religion. That is, submitting your will to Almighty God. In Arabic, I say Islam. Jesus Christ never came to preach Christianity. The word Christianity doesn't exist in the Bible. Do you know that? In the full Bible, the word Christianity is not there. He didn't preach Christianity. The word Christian was a nickname given to the followers of Jesus at Antioch, mentioned in the book of Acts. Nickname. So Jesus Christ preached Islam. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verse number 30, Jesus Christ peace be said that not my will, but my father's will. God's will. In Arabic, he preached nothing but Islam. Similarly, if you read Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna said that you have to submit your will to God. If you understand Arabic, he says that you have to accept Islam. So what we realize that all the messengers taught nothing but submitting our will to God. That is the reason the Quran says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 19, in the dina in the lal Islam, the only way of life accepted in the sight of God is submitting our will to Almighty God. So what we have to go back to the original scriptures. Go back to the commandment of Almighty God and submit your will to the commandment of God and then you will be following the straight path. Hope that answers the question.